Okay, I, our, our first point of potential contention. So let me share with you what, um, what I've thought about balance. So one friend of mine who was a very good athlete and uh, played baseball a little bit in college, but he did a lot of different athletic endeavors in college. And then he got into working in the, uh, the corporate world. I think it was Pepsi for a long time. And I called him up um, 2015 after not having uh, spoken with him uh, for about 30 years. And, and he said to me when he heard my story about uh, balance and, uh, and injury and enjoying life and feeling 100% well every day, he said, <clears throat> when you get into high performance training, He's a, he got his yoga certificate along the way, and, and that helped him with some of his analysis of this, this question that we're tapping into right now. So he said the highest point of performance and training is the highest point of risk of injury, et cetera, which means you could die. So a cold, when you have a really bad flu, one of the reasons everybody's concerned about you is because of our grandparents era. And even now is you're getting closer to death than you were when you didn't have a cold. So there's a point of getting closer to death that that strikes uh, the survival worries, these uh, sustainability worries that we can't take care of ourselves. We won't be able to provide for our, our kids if we're a parent or we're going to die and our parents are going to be left without having a kid. Those types of things run into us. So. Then before I learned that in 2015 in Santa Barbara, I hung out with a guy named Isaac Osborne, who's a biomechanics specialist and, and has been in, in that field in wellness his whole life. He said to him, strength is balance. So let's think about that for a minute. So if you're lifting a weight, does it, does it help if you're this big clunky person or do you have to be like the famous Soviet Vasily Alexeyev who could, he did have a huge gut, he needed the mass, but he could lift that weight over his head and not get injured and break records and not get injured because he was balanced. So those are the types of balance that I'm talking about, sustainability and balance to do an incredibly different thing. It's not about taking it easy because what I do is really not taking it easy. I do three hours of physical activity. If I haven't done a long hike, or a long tennis match, I've done about three hours every day at, you know, in my fifties. And when I was in my age 12 or age 18, it could have been five or seven hours of physical activity. And if I was working on the farm plus doing fitness, it could have been 10 to 15 hours today of physicality. So let me know if, if that taps into what you're saying and, and allows you to think of it possibly a little bit differently. No, I mean, that is abundance, right? Uh, what you're talking about is uh, training for, for maximum. Uh, I, I, I think people often trade off negatives for positives. Uh, and that's the balance I'm talking about. So I think they're a little, little different. Uh, okay. you know, people want to feel good, but not that good. <laughs> okay. So they tend to straddle the middle of the road and, you know, but what you just described is, is abundance. That's, uh, that's abundance. I mean, it's not that I don't eat ice cream, but when I do, I'm not doing it because I worked out. I'm doing it because I love ice cream's great. Uh, you know, it's not. I'm not trading something for the ice cream. Uh, I'm choosing to enjoy that my that that bit of life that is ice cream. Um, so I think that's a mindset. Um, and yeah, that's that's where I was going. So we're on, we're on the same page. It's interesting yeah. how, you know, the title of my book, what I'm up to.